In this video, I'm going to be going over mid-air engine restarts and also what to do if your engine catches fire. Let's start with engine restarts. If your engine fails in the middle of the air, there are two ways you can restart it. You can do an APU start, which is where you use the APU to help you start the engine, or you can do a windmill start, which is where you put the plane into a dive and try to start the engine that way. It's probably better to do an APU start, but if you are at a very high altitude, the APU will not work, so you'll have to do a windmill start. I'll show you how to do an APU start first. So what you need to do is take the engine that failed and bring its throttle all the way back and then put it into the off detent. Then take the engine that's still running and bring its throttle all the way forward. Then you need to start the APU by flipping up the APU start switch. Make sure the APU gets to 100%. If it does not, then you are too high and you need to lower your altitude. Whenever the APU is at 100%, we're going to put the switch for the engine we want to restart into the motor position. So I want to restart the left engine, so I'm going to put the left switch to the motor position. Now whenever you do that, you can see that the RPM for that engine will start climbing. What's happening is that we are using air from the APU and air from the running engine to start spinning the engine that we want to restart. So as you can see, the RPM is only going to get to 30-35%. So before we actually restart the engine, you want to check the temperature and make sure it's not too high. As you can see, my temperature is almost at the minimum, so we're good. So now to restart the engine, I'm going to take my left throttle and put it to the idle position. And whenever I do that, I'm immediately going to put this switch to the normal position. And make sure you do it quickly like this. When I do that, you can see the temperature is going up quickly, and you can see the engine is restarting. Once it restarts, you can put the throttle all the way forward again and you can turn off the APU. So now let's go over how to do a windmill start. This is the one where we put the plane into a dive to start the engines. As you can see I'm climbing here because this start is going to need a lot of altitude. So for a windmill start the first thing you need to do is put this switch here that says cross feed and turn it on. That is going to connect our left and right fuel systems so we can use either fuel pump to start either engine. The next thing is you need to do this switch here that says bleed air and turn it off. Now that bleed air switch uses extra air from the engines to power different systems in the airplane. Whenever we are restarting the engine like this, we want to have as much air as possible so we don't want to be wasting any air for the bleed air systems. So let's go ahead and do the restart now. Let's just say uh, my right engine failed for some reason. I'm not sure why. So what you're going to do is put the plane into a pretty steep nose dive like this. And then you're going to bring both throttles all the way forward. And you're going to take the engine you want to restart and put it into the ignition position. Now when, when I did that, you can see now the RPM is climbing up. And I'm going to level out before I hit the ground. And you can see our engine restarted just like that. Now all we got to do is turn the bleed air switch back on and turn off the crossfeed switch. Okay, so now we're gonna go over engine fires. As you can see, there are three big yellow handles on the front, the left one for the left engine, right for the right engine, and middle for the APU. If one of the engines catches on fire, the handle will start lighting up. As you can see, my right engine just got caught on fire. So what you can do is you can go ahead, pull that handle, and it will shut that engine off. Now, even though the engine is shut off, you can see the fire is still there. What we need to do is extinguish the fire. Now the A10 has two extinguisher bottles inside and you control them with this switch. Pressing it to the left will dispense one bottle and pressing it to the right will dispense the other. Now whenever I dispense the bottle, the bottle will be dispensed into whatever handle is pulled. So right now my right handle is pulled. So if I click this switch either way, it will dispense one bottle into the right engine. Now if you have multiple handles pulled and you dispense the bottle, it will split the fire extinguishing agent into the different engines with their handles pulled. So let's go ahead and click this switch. You can see the LEDs went out because there's no more fire and you can see the engine is not on fire anymore. Thanks for watching this video guys and I'll see you later.